Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Blender 3.4, the alpha, is now here. And of course, the beta of Blender 3.3 is also here, which makes it even way more interesting to see that we have these two releases happening at the same time. And of course, if you'd like to get this, you need to simply go over to Blender, go to Download, go all the way to Experimental Download, and that will bring you right here. And like we've mentioned in previous videos, once a tool is in alpha, it simply means that it is in its initial progress of development. So some of the things that is supposed to be happening in previous releases will be moved over to this, especially if they don't get released. And some of the other tools or features that were supposed to appear in the previous release will now start having some improvements in the alpha. And that is exactly the same thing that is happening between Blender 3.3, the beta, and also Blender 3.4. And for those who would like to take a look at some of the updates or improvement that will be coming over to Blender 3.4, it is worth mentioning that if you go over to release notes currently at the point of recording, there is no update whatsoever. You'll only be getting a core update which deals with fonts, and regardless of these two updates, currently there is no update for Blender 3.4 as it is. Rather, we will be looking at some of the features and also some tools that will be coming over to Blender 3.3 with the beta announced. And with that said, let's get right into it. So, if you open up Blender 3.3, the beta, you would notice that we have a brand new splash screen. A huge shout out to Piotr Krinsky for making this possible. And once we dive directly into Blender, it's worth mentioning that certain things that we've talked about, we've teased, we've actually done a couple of videos and demos about may not be coming over to Blender 3.3 at this point. Starting off, we will not be getting EV Next. So if you go over to the render section and click on drop down, you'd notice that EV Next is no longer here. And that also applies to any updates coming to Eevee, unlike what we saw with previous versions of Blender. The viewport is also not getting any updates, and that also ties to the viewport compositor. The viewport compositor is not making it to Blender 3.3, and if you're into VR, you're also not getting any updates with this. At the same time, there is no updated set of add-ons that will be coming over to Blender 3.3, and for the most part, if you did see the video where we talked about the brand new sculpting canvas option for texture painting when Blender 3.3 was an alpha, that in itself is also not making it to Blender 3.3. There's a good number of things coming over to Blender 3.3. Starting off with the UI, the dark mode has come to stay. It is also worth mentioning that within the UI, if you do own a laptop and you're working with Windows, there is now a support for precision touchpad gesture for those who like to wiggle across different sets of panels within the UI. The VFX and video also has a good number of updates that is also coming to it and one of the best ones especially for VFX artists is the implemented image from plain marker. Now this operator simply creates or updates the image data block using pixels which the planar marker sees. And the idea here is for you to create unwrapped textures from viewboards or footages, edit them, retouch them, and reproject them back to the footage with an updated content. Of course, there's also a couple of updates coming over to the video sequence editor. And for those who did see when we talked about the new curve system, yes, the new curve system has come to stay. And before we talk about the curves, if you right click right now, you will notice that we have the shade auto smooth. So with that there, let's go over to the modifier, apply this. And now if you hit shift and tap A on the keyboard, the new curves now only ships with one option. So the, the previous option, we did have the empty hair and also another set of hair, which is uh, something that you can work with. But right now we only have the empty hair. So if we have the object selected, we click on the empty hair, we can now proceed to start adding hair to this object. There's also an update to the hair or the curve edit panels. So with the hair curve selected, if you click on this dropdown, you now notice that we have object and sculpt mode. Previously, we did have the object mode, the edit mode, and also the sculpt mode, but the edit mode has been taken out since there was no need to have that there in the first place. So if you go over to the sculpt mode, you can now simply add hairs wherever you want, and you can explore with all of the amazing features however you like. If you want to create interpolations, of course you can proceed to do that. And at this point, once you create this object, there is now an extra node that is created within the geometry editor. It's also worth mentioning that unlike what we talked about in previous videos, when this was still in alpha, at this point, if you choose to render in both EV and cycles, these automatically renders. So you no longer need to add the set reduce node to get this to render and materials just work super easy. Although in certain circumstances, you might also need the set radius, especially if you like to have the hair a bit more thin than what you get once you render initially. And speaking about the geometry nodes, there's a couple of new nodes that are currently available. One of them is the mesh to volume, which is pretty nice. We also have the volume cube, which is also super impressive to see. 
At the same time, there are nodes for instancing, like the instance scale, the instance rotation, and with the new implementation of UV, the new UV unwrap and also the pack UV islands is also very useful for procedural model creators. Now, something which I also love to see in the next feature updates of Blender is node groups. Now, we've seen and talked about this earlier, but right now, it would make sense to see that since the geometry node is now super strong, that these comes over to Blender. We do have the asset browser, so creating a node group section where you can save up your nodes and store them for usage for some time later in the future, or probably distribute this would definitely be useful. And for context, we're looking at Houdini. So for example, let's say you create a simple box and create a wireframe and merge them together, select all of them and make them a subnet, which automatically you can now save as digital assets. This actually makes sense because at any point in time, you can grab that digital asset and pin it somewhere within the shelf, which you can call back at any point in time. And if you do save that digital asset, just like you could save your assets within your asset browser in Blender, you can always fire up the app tool or context menu. And from there, you can search for the node group, which you saved as an asset and load that in. That is exactly something which I like to see come over to Blender. And this would definitely be very useful. And while we talk about useful stuff, there's a couple of updates to the grease pencil and the animation set of tools that now comes with Blender. And for those who are also thinking about rendering, at this point, you now have a plethora of supporters for rendering in Blender. So previously we did see the CUDA support for Blender and over time we did get the AMD hip support. Right now, if you simply go over to edit, go over to preference and you are running an intergraphic CAD, switch over to systems, you would notice that the one API is now here. Although this is currently compatible for only Intel GPUs with the XE HPG architecture, and this would run with any version of Windows from 101.1660 or newer. So if you do own an Intel GPU, simply confirm if this has the XP HPG architecture, and from there you can take advantage of Cycles GPU rendering and get the most out of it. Another cool set of improvement that is now available with Blender 3.3 the beta is the pipeline asset and input output. Alembic files now have presets like we mentioned in previous videos, and at this point, if you're working with OBJ, STL, or USD files, the way you get to import them are way more faster than in previous versions. One cool thing with the USD though is open BDBs can now be exported as USDs, and this makes a lot of sense. And for those who like to create UDIM texture sets, and you've been thinking about ways that you can actually embed these UDIM texture sets in your .blender file, that is something you shouldn't worry about anymore. Packing UDIM texture sets is now available for Blender, as in this case, you can now simply pack your UDIM texture sets directly into your .blender files and distribute this however you choose. And this reminds me of something, that if you go over to the demo section of blender.org, you will now notice that we have to stylize human base meshes. Now, this is from a tutorial that was made previously by Julian. And this is the final product from the creation of the stylized character Rain and Snow. So if you're thinking about learning how these things were made, you can go through and take this free course that is available on the Blender Studio. And if you're just interested in grabbing these stylized characters and working with them, especially if you like to use these base meshes for your modeling or for your sculpting, then these are right here. And of course you can pop them right into your asset browser and start using them. And here are some sales that are happening right now for those who would like to save up on some stuff. I did reach out to Amandeep, the creator of this wonderful ultimate value bundle pack, which consists of the RAN tools and several other tools that he has created. And he did give us something. Now, if you take a look here, you would notice that you have this at 25% off, but for sure, if you want to get this at 30% off, link is going to be in the description for that. And by the way, if you're also thinking about checking out some very amazing camera effects for bouquet, lens imperfection, the folks at B Production have created this amazing Blender tool, which is having a launch offer of 25%. So this is also very cool. For those who are into bouquet, probably your camera fanatic, and you like to give that gorgeous background look to your models when you render them, then this is a very good tool that you should get, especially right now that it's having a discount sale. And finally, we talked about this guy sometime within last week, and they are still doing it. The folks at Polygonic are running 40% off with the super coupon code Summertime. This is going to be running from now to August the 2nd. So just in case you like to get any of this set of tools that they have, you can plug in summertime within the coupon code and get 40% off before this goes back or probably reverts back to a given price. This 40% is almost twice the price of what you get with a regular Blender sale. And I think this currently is a steal for anyone who wants to get it.
So this is more like it. For those who like to take a look at Blender 3.4, the alpha, or probably you would like to get Blender 3.3, the beta, and start working with it, or you're sort of obsessed with these models and you want to grab them, you want to use them as your stylized stuff, or probably you want to get this value bundle, links to all of this are definitely going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.